Now today what I'm going to do is do a PSU for the um, CD32, my beloved CD32. And I'm going to do it with that. Also, not only for this, I'm going to double this up, have two outputs, one for the CD32 and one for the Amiga, and have them switchable. So it just saves me from having two freaking power bricks there. And it'll also save a plug point on the power strip. Now last week, or last time, I did a major PSU project, uh, assembling two PSUs here. Um, they still need to send them off to Scott and Wayne, <laughs> but yeah, if you wish to watch that, the link is in the description below. Right, so let's get started here. And I'm wearing nail polish, which is nice, but seems to chip very easily, so let's compare <laughs> what my nail polish is like at the end after I've done all this. Now when somebody kindly gifts or donates something to me, uh, I, it takes me a little time to show it because I want to show it at the right moment. And I think this is the right moment to show this. Now I've been very kindly sent a Terrible Fire 328 card by Jeff Jones uh, or Super Duper on um, Amiibe. If you wish to, uh, I will link you to his sales thread in the description below if you want to get yourself one of these. But this will, you know, add so much to the... Um, the CD32. No, I don't want to get into this too much now, but uh, you know, this accelerator will have its own video soon, hopefully. So let's put this back in and get started with the PSU. Okay, so first things first, let's open this out. Uh, yes, I did snip the wires off here to use them for uh, Scott's power supply. So I have you know, the wires here, the cables here, sorry, uh, that's no problem. And also I can just have a third cable for the Amiga out. Okay, so we have here a linear power supply, which, you know, I am going to keep spare, to be honest. I'm not going to throw it away or anything like this. But... Look at that, that is literally millimeters away from this. I mean, it's not so safe, you can like, you know, shorten and switch on the power supply when you don't want it to. Here we go, we have a big monster linear power supply here, which I'll put over here, because it's freaking heavy, and holes are poking into my, <laughs> my skin. Okay, so now somebody was asking me if this will fit inside a regular um, PSU power case, power case, <laughs> PSU, you know, case, and yes, I can confirm that it does. So look, if you press it into the top like this, then these are a bit more free. However, I think what you may have to do, yeah, the issue is with these here and possibly this there. Um, what you may have to do is just like, you know, snap this thing off, which, you know, I've got no problems doing. Okay, so get ready for things to get loud. using this. I'm wondering now if I'll be able to f actually fit the stern switch in here because it's huge. <laughs> there is another model of you know this um, Meanwhile PSU that will fit much more easier in this. Um, I saw it on Mikey G Retro's channel, do check that out, and he's used the RT50B which you know it's only like this is 65 RT65B and it's 65 watts, as it indicates, RT 50B 50 watts. There's only 15 watts of difference. So, you know, if you want a smaller one, then, you know, that for this, then that's another option you can do if you don't want to mod your case, that is. I don't mind modding the case, to be honest. I will, again, I will also link that in the description below as well as Mikey's channel. Okay, so it's confirmed it does fit. You just need to modify, you know, the case a little bit. The only thing that's going to be an issue is because you've chopped off this part, the screws will just, you know, that's what was holding them in. Here, the screws are just going to fall all the way freaking through. So, you know, I recommend getting washers for this. 
And I'm gonna have to use washers on that. Either washers or screws with like, you know, a wider screw head. Which probably be a better way to do it, I think. Okay, plans have slightly changed. This is gonna just have to be for the CD32 <laughs> because this um, three pole switch, which, you know, this is what I needed um, to switch between the power supplies. This, there's no way. <laughs> there's no way to fit it inside here. <laughs> I don't know what made me think that I could, but I just miscalculated it in my mind. <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> so yeah. Um, it's gonna be just for the CD32, but anyway, so what I've done, I've been looking through my collection of freaking screws here <laughs> and um, I don't like, you know, collecting screws for pleasure, don't get me wrong, it's just you need them sometimes. So, um, yeah, what was I saying? I've managed to find some screws which will work, you know, in place of the original ones. Actually, the original ones, I'll stick them in here because they'll come in handy for something else. Okay, before we like put anything in, let's just test the screw threads. Fantastic, that one works. Quick flashback to my CD32 video where I cruelly put together this PSU just to test if the CD32 works. I wish to show again the pinouts of the 4-pin DIN plug. If you wish to watch the full video, the link is in the description below. So this here is the diagram and uh, this is the um, plug itself that I've just opened out. Uh, this side here, the, the back side is the solder side, that's referring to that. That side plugs in to here, which is the, um, you know, the socket on the CD32 it itself. Now, please do, I can <laughs> disclaimer here, do research and check your own pinouts. I don't want to be responsible for, you know, screwing anyone's CD32 up <laughs> because I just don't want to, you know, be responsible for screwing any Amigas up. Uh, out there. So yeah, please do check your uh, CD32s. I mean, please <laughs> do check for pinouts. <laughs> please do check for pinouts. Anyway, I mean, technically the CD32 still has a switch at the back, the power switch at the back, um, but I wish to put a power switch here anyway. So just testing if it, you know, all fits first. Uh, yes, I'm a bit oily. <laughs> it's because I've um, put olive oil on myself <laughs> because I've managed to get the cord grip of the, um, uh, what do you call it? The, <laughs> the old one. And I need to put it through this. And it's going to take forever if I don't put olive oil on it. <laughs> Which I can, you know, take off afterwards, but still. Okay, first of all, let's just... Hey, that's easy now. <laughs> <laughs> it was not that easy before, trust me. <laughs> I, I'm laughing because I know a couple of people who are going to get a good kick out of this. A couple of friends. <laughs> those, <laughs> those who have made the PSUs for in the last video <laughs> are going to be not going to let me live this one down. There <laughs> we go. It looks fantastic already. So now let's wire it. Actually, I need to get the the grip for the other side as well. And uh, I was hoping to kind of like, you know, but there's literally not that much room left in there. I was hoping to get both the cables out the back. And can two switches out the front, but this is just not gonna happen. So yeah. This is a limited edition <laughs> power supply for the CD32, especially. Also, I don't mind because olive oil is actually good for the skin. So, <laughs> just bear that in mind. I do use it as a moisturizer sometimes. As well as... Uh, Avocado oil. It has to be extra virgin. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna move on and start this now. <laughs> this is what happens when you hang around with tools too for too long. You like double think everything you freaking say. Okay, here it is. Let's just pinch this from there oil this into <laughs> no 
It stripped the wire. <laughs> Darn it. Okay, I'll have to remember this. Brown, black, gray. <laughs> yes. Because I need to put this stupid thing in, don't I? And uh, in the last, the comment of the last video, a couple of people said to use those fork spade connectors, whatever they're called. Those, you know, claws. <laughs> I do agree, that would be much better. Um, bare wire is also okay, but um, yeah, you can also use them. I might just get myself some of those, those um, claw, spread, whatever, fork. I don't know what the freak they're called. Amp. Someone said. Oil this a bit. <laughs> I'm gonna start the oil this a bit. Don't look. So what I'm going to do now is just remove the the bottom part of the switch. And just this old solder. Yeah. Okay. Just remove that. And the live coming from the mains is going to go there. Heat shrink tubing. No, the tubing is shrinking. Because of the freaking heat going down the wire. Okay, pliers, pliers, pliers. Because I don't I want the pliers to absorb the heat. So the stupid heat drink heat shrink tubing doesn't melt there. <laughs> Honest, I'm s hey, first freaking tip of the nail polish. <laughs> anyway, um, I'm still a bit funny about this because these parts are exposed. I'm not comfortable with that, so what I'm gonna do is just hot glue, you know, some hot glue on there just to insulate, make sure it's insulated because yeah, that's not good. Okay, we just put that in, turn that on, wait for that because this takes freaking ages. Heavy duty glue gun. Heats it very well. It adheres very well, but it takes ages. Okay, so while that heats up, let's. Because now it feels much safer. Is that that set and. We'll fit this into the case. It's actually much easier doing than doing it with the wedge case, to be honest. Okay, so one thing you just need to make sure of is the top of this, you know, goes under that because that's where the vent holes are, and these this does give out some heat. So just um, yeah, just put it in here at the top. You should be able to just push it down. Yeah, everything is in. Just need to screw the final bits in. And there we go, a nice CD32 PSU here. Which I need a plug. <laughs> and again, before I connect it to my CD32, I'm just gonna do some testing on here. Okay, so this is plugged in now. The next thing we need to do is just test the output. I can hear it already. By the way, when there's no load on it, it makes a bit of a whiny sound. When there's a load on it, you know, it goes quiet. So yeah, don't be alarmed by the sound. This should be 5 volts. Fantastic. It is. And this should be 12 volts. Yep, fantastic. I'm actually curious that this doesn't need a minus 12 volts. <laughs> and the 1200 does. Okay, so let's do proper testing now. The last thing. Okay, so I've connected all this up. I'm so glad this has a composite out so I can, you know, link it to this. Um, so yeah, let's power it on and try it. Fantastic. 
fantastic. It works. I got myself a CD32 power supply. <laughs> Picture is so bad, but it's fine because I just used this monitor just for testing. <laughs> I'm, I'm happy with it. I just wish this thing had RGB and S video in. But other than that, it's good for testing. Anyway, yeah, this is fantastic. It works. And my nails here are not doing too bad at all. <laughs> so they're all fine. Just a chip here, chip here. A bit of wear there. And that's about it. And some here. <laughs> anyway, uh, that's all for today. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to hit that like button. Do share with your friends and groups. And also do leave a thought in the comments below. Don't forget to check out my other videos and do subscribe for more. Also, don't forget to check out my Facebook, Twitter and SoundCloud. I also wish to say a big thank you to my patrons for their support. And uh, yeah, don't forget to check out their channels and websites in the description below.